Much of Kim Jong-il persona is based on cult of personality, meaning that legend and official North Korean government accounts describe his life, character, and accent in a ways that promote and legitimize his leadership, including his birth. Over the years, Kim's dominating personality and complete concentration of power has come to define the country, North Korea. Kim Jong-il was born on February 16, 1941 AD, though official accounts please his birth a year later. Some mysteries surround when and where Kim Jong-il was born. Official North Korean biographies state that his birth occurred on February 16, 1942 in a secret camp on Mount Paikdu along the Chinese border in Samjian country, Rea Gang province in the Democratic People's Republic of Korea or North Korea. Other reports indicate he was born a year later in Vyatsky in the former Soviet Union. During World War II, his father commanded the 1st Battalion of the Soviet 88th Brigade, composed of Chinese and Korean exiles battling the Japanese army. Kim Jong-il's mother was Kim Jong-suk, his father's first wife. Official accounts indicate that Kim Jong-il comes from a family of nationalists who actively resisted imperialism from the Japanese in the early 20th century. Kim Jong was four years old when World War II ended. When Kim was aged five or six, his younger brother, Surak Kim, drowned in a family swimming pool. Unconfirmed Soviet reports said that Kim was responsible for the accident. Kim's mother died while giving childbirth in 1949. His official government biography claims Kim Jong-il completed his general education between September 1950 and August 1960 in Pyongyang, the current capital city of North Korea. But scholars point out that the first few years of his period were during the Korean War and content his early education took place in the People's Republic of China, where it was safer to live. Official accounts claim that throughout his schooling, Kim was involved in politics. While attending the Namsan Higher Middle School in Pyongyang, he was active in Children's Union, a youth organization that promotes the concept of duty or the spirit of self-reliance and the Democratic Youth League DYL, taking part in the study of Marxist political theory. During his youth, Kim Jong-il showed an interest in a wide range of subjects including agriculture, music and mechanics. In high school, he took classes in automotive repair and participated in trips to farms and factories. Official accounts of his early schooling also point out his leadership capabilities. As a vice chairman of his school's DYL branch, he encouraged younger classmates to pursue greater ideological education and organize academic competitions and seminars as well as field trips. Kim Jong-il graduated from Namsan Harris Middle School in 1960 and enrolled the same year at Kim Il-sung University. He majored in Marxist political economy and minor in philosophy and military science. While at the university, Kim trained as an apprentice in textile machine factory and took classes in building TV broadcast equipment. During this time, he also accompanied his father on tours of fields guidance in several of North Korea's province. Kim Jong-il joined the Workers' Party, the official ruling party of North Korea, in July 1961. Soon after his 1964 graduation from the university, Kim Jong-il began his rise through the ranks of the Korean Workers' Party. The 1960s were a time of high tension between many communist countries. China and the Soviet Union were clashing over ideological differences that resulted in several war skirmishes. Soviet satellite nations in Eastern Europe were simmering with dissension, and North Korea was pulling away from both Soviet and Chinese influence. Kim Jong-il was appointed to the Workers' Party Central Committee to lead the offensive against the revisionists and ensure the party did not deviate from the ideological line set by his father. He also led efforts to explore dissidents and deviant policies to ensure strict enforcement of the party's ideological system. In addition, he took on major military reform to strengthen the party's control of the military and expel disloyal officers. Kim Jong-il oversaw the Propaganda and Agitation Department, the government agency responsible for media control and censorship. Kim gave firm instruction that the party's monolithic ideological message be communicated constantly by writers, artists and officials in the media. 
According to official accounts, he revolutionized Korean fine arts by encouraging the production of new works and new media. This included the art of film and cinema. Mixing history, political ideology, and movie making, Kim encouraged the production of several epic films, which glorified works written by his father. His official biography claims that Kim Jong il has composed six operas and enjoys staging elaborated musicals. Kim is reported to be an avid film buff who owns more than 20,000 movies, including the entire series of James Bond films, for his personal enjoyment. His father, Kim Il sung, began preparing his son to lead North Korea in the early 1970s. Between 1971 and 1980, Kim Jong-il was appointed to increasingly important position in the Korean Workers' Party. During this time, he instituted policies to bring party official closures to the people by forcing bureaucrats to work among subordinates for one month a year. He launched the Three Revolution Team Movement, in which teams of political, technical and scientific technicians traveled around the country to provide training. He was also involved in economic planning to develop certain sectors of the economy. In 1978, Kim Jong-il reportedly ordered the kidnapping of celebrated South Korean filmmaker Sing sang ok and his wife Choi yoon hee so that they could make a socialist version of Godzilla, his all-time favorite film. By the 1980s, preparations were begin made for Kim to succeed his father as the leader of North Korea. At this time, the government began building a personality cult around Kim Jong-il, patterned after that of his father. Just as his father Kim Il-sung was known as a great leader, Kim Jong-il was held in North Korean media as the fearless leader and the great successor to the revolutionary cause. His portraits appeared in public building along with his father's. He also initiated a series of drop-in inspections of business, factories and government office. At the Sixth Party Congress in 1980, Kim Jong-il was given senior post in the Politburo, the Policy Committee of Korean Workers' Party, the Military Commission, and the Secretariat, the Executive Department charged with carrying out policy. Thus, Kim was positioned to control all aspects of the government. have had a perceived weakness was the military. The army was the foundation of power in North Korea, and Kim had no military service experience. With the assistance of allies in the military, Kim was able to gain acceptance by the army officials as the next leader of the North Korea. By 1991, he was designated as the Supreme Commander of the Korean People's Army, thus giving him the tool he needed to maintain complete control of the government once he took power. Following the death of Kim Il-sung in July 1994, Kim Jong-il took total control of the country. This transition of power from father to son had never been seen before in a communist regime. In difference to his father, the office of president was abolished and Kim Jong-il took the titles of general secretary of the Workers' Party and chairman of the National Defense Commission, which was declared the highest office of the state. It is important to understand that much of Kim Jong-il's persona is based on cult of personality, meaning that legend and official North Korean government accounts describe his life, character and action in ways that promote and legitimize his leadership. Examples include his family's nationalist revolutionary roots and claims that his birth was foretold by a swallow, the appearance of a double rainbow over Mount Pegdu, and a new star in the heavens. He is known to personally manage the country's affairs and set operational guidelines for individual industries. He is said to be arrogant and self-centered in policy decisions, openly rejecting criticism or opinions that differ from his. He is suspicious of nearly all of those who surround him and volatile in his emotions. Some stories can be verified while others are most likely exaggerated. In the 1990s, North Korea went through a series of devastating and debilitating economic episodes. With the collapse of Soviet Union in 1991, North Korea lost its main trading partner. Strained relations with China following China's normalization with South Korea in 1992 further limited North Korea's trade options. Record-breaking floods in 1995 and 1996, followed by drought in 1997, cripples North Korea's food production. With only 18% of its land suitable for farming in the best of times, North Korea began experiencing a devastating famine. Worried about his position in power, 
Kim Jong-il instituted the military first policy, which prioritized national resources to the military. Thus, the military would be pacified and remain in his control. Kim could defend himself from threats, domestic and foreign, while economic condition worsened. The policy did produce some economic growth and along with some socialist-type market practice characterized as filtration with capitalism, North Korea has been able to remain operational despite being heavily dependent on foreign aid for food. In 1994, the Clinton administration and North Korea agreed to a framework designed to freeze and eventually dismantle North Korea's nuclear weapons program. In exchange, the United States would provide assistance in producing two power-generating nuclear reactors and supplying fuel oil and other economic aid. In 2000, the presidents of North Korea and South Korea met for diplomatic talks and agreed to promote reconciliation and economic cooperation between the two countries. The agreement allowed families from both countries to reunite and signal a move towards increased trade and investment. For a time, it appeared that North Korea was re-entering the international community. Then, in 2002, U.S. intelligence agencies suspected North Korea was enriching uranium or building the facilities to do so, presumably for making nuclear weapons. In his 2002 State of Union address, U.S. President George W. Bush identified North Korea as one of the countries in the axis of evil along with Iraq and Iran. The Bush administration soon revoked the 1994 treaty designed to eliminate North Korea's nuclear weapons program. Finally, in 2003, Kim Jong-il's government admitted to having produced nuclear weapons for security purposes, citing tension with President Bush. Late in 2003, the Central Intelligence Agency issued a report that North Korea possessed one and possibly two nuclear bombs. The Chinese government stepped in to try to mediate a settlement but President Bush refused to meet with Kim Jong-il one-on-one and instead insisted on multilateral negotiations. China was able to gather Russia, Japan, South Korea, and the United States for negotiation with North Korea. Talks were held in 2003, 2004, and twice in 2005. In all meetings, the Bush administration demanded North Korea eliminate its nuclear weapons program. It adamantly maintained any normalcy of relation between North Korea and the United States would come about only if North Korea changed its human rights policies eliminated all chemical and biological weapons program and ended missile technology proliferation. North Korea continually rejected the proposal. In 2006, North Korea's Central News Agency announced North Korea had successfully conducted an underground nuclear bomb test. There have been many reports and claims regarding Kim Jong-il's health and physical condition. In August 2008, a Japanese publication claimed Kim had died in 2003 and had been replaced with a stand-in for public appearances. It was also noted that Kim had not made a public appearance for the Olympic torch ceremony in Pyongyang in April 2008. After Kim failed to show up for a military parade celebrating North Korea's 60th anniversary, US intelligence agency believed Kim to be ill after possibly suffering a stroke. During the fall of 2008, numerous news sources gave conflicting reports on his condition. The North Korean news agency reported Kim participated in national election in March 2009 and he was unanimously elected to a seat in the Supreme People's Assembly, the North Korean Parliament. The assembly will vote later to confirm him as a chairman of the National Defense Commission. In the report, it was said Kim cast his ballot at the Kim il Sung's university and later to the facility and talked to a small group of people. Kim's health was watched closely by other countries because of its volatile nature, the country's possession of nuclear weapon, and its precarious economic condition. Kim also had no apparent successor to his regime as did his father. His three sons spent most of their lives outside the country and none seemed to be in the favor of the dear leader to ascend at the top spot. Many international experts believe that when Kim died, there would be mayhem because there seemed to be no apparent method for a transfer of power. But due to North Korean's government predilection for secrecy, this was too hard to know. In 2009, however, news reports revealed that Kim planned to name his son Kim Jong-un as his successor. Very little was known about Kim's heir apparent 
until 2010, only one officially confirmed photo of Jong Un existed, and not even his official birth date has been revealed. Kim rarely traveled abroad, and when he did, it was by train. His followers believe that Kim had a fear of flying, and that's why he used to travel through armored train. He was also a huge fan of movies and had collected of 20,000 DVDs and videotapes. He also produced a movie in 2006. Kim was also said to be one of the world's biggest buyers of Hennessy Cognac. North Korea's government under Kim's rule was the most repressive one. His regime used to be the most conservative one with no freedom on the press, religion or equal education. No official record exists about Kim Jong's marital life. But sources believe he was officially married once and had three mistresses. People who were nearby Kim believe he had three sons and two daughters named Kim Jong Nam, Kim Jong Chul, Kim Jong Un, Kim Sol Sung, and Kim Yo Jong. One of Kim's former chefs reported in 2004 that the leader developed a taste for nice French wine, lobster, and a donkey meat. Kim Jong-il died December 17, 2011 of a heart attack at the age of 69 while traveling on a train. Media reports says the leader was on a work trip for official duties. Upon news of the dear leader's death, North Koreans marched on the capital, weeping and crying. His birth death, February 16th, is celebrated as a day of signing star and declared as the greatest auspicious holiday of the nation. Kim is said to be survived by three wives, three sons, and three daughters. Other reports claim he has fathered 70 children, most of whom are housed in villas throughout North Korea. His youngest child, Kim Jong-un, succeeded him. Thank you.